The 605 members of Canada's so-called Black Battalion, young men who wanted to serve. 100 years ago today, they boarded a ship to sail to England. The war would be their second battle. Their first was on Canadian soil. Even in spite of the fact that we needed men to go to war, right, that we were still willing to not allow this particular group of folks to go because they were black males. Among them was Sylvia Paris's father. After years of rejection, they were allowed to form the number two construction battalion. They headed into war not with rifles, but with picks and shovels. They were tasked with building trenches, bridges, clearing the way for those who fought on the front lines. They were putting themselves in the immediate danger. Um, so in that regard, uh, they were a big contribution to, uh, to the war um, and what happened uh, in the success of the war. When they were told, it is not your war, it's a white man's war, they were in effect being told, this is not your country. You live here, but don't think it is your country. 21 of those young men didn't come home. They didn't die in battle, but of illness, because they weren't given access to the same medicine and health care as white soldiers. Historians say their experience carries relevance today. They were in effect separated from the rest of the military and the rest of the country by a wall. A wall built of bigotry, a wall built of prejudice, a wall, a wall built of irrational fears, a wall built of hatred. To me, it, it, it's a gut feeling. It, it's, it's part of me. Retired it's Air Force Captain George Borden has made it his mission to share their story. He's traveled the country with this quilt made to honor young men who persevered. He believes he was able to have a career because of the Black Battalion. They came back, they came back to the very same thing they left with. They were still not considered full citizens, they were still disrespected, they were not hired or employed. Tonight, their families and community will gather by the waterfront at Pier 21, a chance to mark a powerful moment in Canadian history. Carolyn Ray, CBC News, Halifax.